Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney Blind. Oh, I think we're here. This is trial time for the last case. I am so nervous because I feel like when we did the investigation earlier, I didn't get the gist of what's really happening. I only got a lot of information and then a clusterfuck of, like, crap. And I don't know what to do with any of it. I'm so nervous. Oh, hi, darling. It's been a while. How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Wright? Frankly, there are still a lot of uh, gray areas. Yeah, you're telling me. What the hell are we gonna do? People were right. Like, this is the case that's probably gonna shank me right here. Like, I still don't understand everything. Or rather, the whole thing is one big gray area. It is. Don't worry about me, no matter what the outcome. I'm ready to accept my fate. What? Would you please stop being so defeatist? I'm sitting here trying to help you? I believe in you, sis. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yes? A defense attorney should never believe their client. Why? That doesn't seem right. The defendant is called to trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. Miss Skye, you... You remind me a lot of Mia. But there is one decisive difference between you and her. And that is? You're not a defense attorney. Well, that is one thing. I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. I am nervous. Oh, no. I am so nervous. My first trial without a Fae helping me. I know! Is Emma really gonna be any help? I'm worried about this. No one's gonna bail me out this time. Yeah, we don't have Larry or anything. This is real bad. Oh, Mia. I need help, darling. I'll be alone in there. So I have to discover the truth all by myself. I really hope we can find it. Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole way. Aw, oh, darling, at least I have you for whatever that actually means. Shit. <laughs> All right, here we go. I am so, so nervous about this. What's up, Edgeworth? At least I get to see Edgeworth's beautiful face. Can we just, can we just talk about that? Hey, Judge, how you doing, buddy? How's your bald head? I haven't seen you in a while either. The court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Edgeworth, is that a stab at me, bro? Look, I know you're in a bad mood because you have to do this, but please. We're all we have. I All I have is you now. Oh, God. I'm in trouble. I'm in, I'm in deep doo-doos. Well, why are you thinking about this now? Oh, I guess. I haven't been in court since Edgeworth's trial. It's been a while now. And we finally get to look at his beautiful face, although he's very impatient with us. I hope that personal feelings will not be part of today's proceedings, Mr. Wright. What? Girl, please. I'm just talking about your butt. I don't have no personal feelings. <laughs> it's just your butt, boy. I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. The judgment to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. Your opening statement, please. Chief Prosecutor Lana Skye has committed an unpardonable crime. Not only this, but she was rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office lot. Wow, he's much more forceful in person- T Girl, don't write that down! <laughs> Please, I'm gonna slap you. I suddenly feel like confessing to everything. However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. There was a witness to her crime. A professional witness. What does that fucking mean? That bitch didn't get to you too, did she? I'm gonna slap the boobies off her. Please, let me guess, we get to talk to her now. Well, then call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. It's gonna be Angel, right? Has to be. She's like the only one we have. The prosecution calls its first witness, Miss Angel Starr, to the stand. The cough-up queen. How is she a professional witness? What the fuck does that mean? That just sounds seamy. Haven't I seen you somewhere? Oh, no. Is this gonna, like, allude to her being some kind of prostitute or something? Because I swear to God. She seduces men with her food. You ordered the caviar lunch, right? Ho ho, caviar, I've never eaten caviar before. What, please? No, this is, excuse me, this is like bribery, isn't it? This is clearly illegal. Ah, and for you, I have a fiesta bowl. What? Uh, thanks. Well, at least she brought us one too. Will the witness state her name and profession? Edward, don't get mad, boy. Just because you didn't get a lunch is not my fucking problem. <laughs> ah, and you, sir? Did you order the fingerprint lunchbox? What? That's just rice with sesame seeds on it. Oh, Edgeworth got shit. 
Oh my god. He got shit on. <laughs> he didn't even get anything good. It is too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Oh, girl, what you gonna do now? Well, your honor, how does it taste? So this is why everyone raves about caviar. It's so tasty it hurts. Pardon me? Well, I don't want to think about that. Not even for a second. I always thought caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. Ew, what? Why is that even- that's not even a thing! Edgeworth, stop this madness! Can we talk about Stop the Madness again? I think I talked about that in my fucking last costume quest video, but here it is again! It's come back! Me? The name is Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself running Lunchland these days. Is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Girl, you- you are barking up the wrong tree. Edgeworth about to slap you with his finger. Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. The prosecution will wait. I'm not finished eating. Oh my good. Get fucking Judge Judy up in this bitch. Because this is ridiculous. I can't believe this. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. As you know, we usually call on the police to provide a description of the crime. Yeah, why aren't we doing that this time? Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. Uh-huh. You got a wiener on your necklace. I know exactly what you're a professional of. Uh, huh? What exactly does that mean? Oh, thank God. I'm not the only one. I thought I was missing something. Until two years ago, Miss Angel Stahl was a special investigator with the police. What? Doing what? Investigating what? Oh, well, let's hear this. What, was she a secretary for somebody? What? I don't believe that for two seconds. First-rate homicide detective, my ass. I don't think so. Miss Star was a detective? No, don't listen to this bullcrap. What the fuck? <laughs> I know who you are. Cough up? Part. What? Pardon me? Cough up Queen Angel Star, Your Honor. Long time no see. Part. What? V -v -v Very well, you may continue with the description, Miss Star. What? I don't understand. Are we going to find out more about this? If I might have the court's attention over here. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Alright, let's pay attention. If I go quiet for any point of time, it means I'm actually trying to listen and pay attention. I'm very sorry if that comes off as weird. The parking lot at the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. A block is for prosecutor's office personnel. B block is for visitors and clients. A chain divider separates the two blocks. Right. I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up prosecutor spaces, yes. The crime took place by a car in the back of A block in the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with a knife and went to drive the body out. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was this valiant witness? Why, it was me, your honor. Mm-hmm. All right, we got the floor plans. I don't know if I need to look at those again. I probably will at some point. Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, Your Honor. Immediately after that, I apprehended the Chief Prosecutor. Hmm. It seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Wright? No. Get a lie detector test up in here. Every time I say this and nobody fucking <laughs> listens to me. It seems that some poor losers are unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honor. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? Pardon me? Oh, good God. If you can, then give them your worst, Miss Star. Yo, Judge, I thought we were bros, boy. Alright, fine. I'm gonna press everything. I hope I don't get penalized for this. I know this case is probably gonna run a lot different. Somehow, I always knew a day would, like this would come. Is that part of your testimony? What does that have to do with anything? I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. When I sensed something, perhaps it was my finely honed detective instincts working. Uh-huh. Then, through a wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Then, she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Right. Through the grate? So you were in the other side of the parking lot? Bring a lunchbox to your boyfriend? How touching. <laughs> As you can see, there is no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be nothing other than the point of the knife which you saw being stabbed into Detective Goodman. Was that a joke? Because it sucked. 
So, how does it feel to be utterly crushed? I don't know, I'll get back to you. Yeah. It's merely a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. That was funny. You should make more jokes. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine- Oh, I'm going to. First of all, I'm gonna push that first statement, because what the fuck was that about? That was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Alright, do it. Somehow I always knew a day like this would come- Excuse me. What does that mean? How did you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic abhorrence of crime, yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to tragedy. What the fuck does that mean? The lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted. <laughs> Edgeworth, you've given the sass boy. Given that they are used to erasing inconvenient evidence at their whim. Oh, oh, she did get you there though. Oh. Killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Edgeworth, I think she's taking a stab at you. Which I don't really think she should do. Miss Starr, do you have something personal against prosecutors? I felt that I'd have found my dream job when I became an investigator. And if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Oh, I see. So you do have bad blood here. Laid off? She was fired. Of course she was. What the fuck was she doing? You know she wasn't doing her job. To me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. That said, I am a pro. As you know, my testimony is unbiased and flawless. Very well. You may continue, Miss Star. Uh-huh. Alright. I was on my way to deliver I mean, I'm just gonna do this. I'm- I'm- Until I know that I'm getting penalized, I'm pressing everything. This boyfriend, he's the detective? Not that boyfriend, the security guard. Oh right, you have a million. Th that boyfriend? You have several? Yes. This boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Care to join? Um... Wow, you really don't have standards, I see. Maybe you're just one of those people that likes to collect things. The yet another boyfriend a position is still open for applicants. I'll stick with the lunch. If <laughs> Girl, even the fucking judge don't want your shit. Note to self, the judge had to think before replying. Good one. The security guard room is in the lot in A block. Wait a minute, though. Wait a minute already. If you were in A block going to visit your boyfriend, then how did you see her stab someone through the grate? Wouldn't that mean she was on the other side? Then how did she get it all the way to the trunk? Because we weren't even allowed to look in B block. Yeah, right there. It's up on the second level, so you can see everything from there. But the, but still, how did you look through a grate? That would be the room with the security sign, right? Am I wrong about this? Incidentally, did you bring your lunchboxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I parked in B block. So, she was in B block- Oh, okay. Fine. Then there goes my theory. Fine. When I sense something, perhaps it was my finely honed detective instincts working. I mean, I'll do it. You sense something? So you're saying you had a premonition of the murder? It felt like... how would you say? Oh yes, it was like the feeling you get when you view a pumpkin chock full of seeds. What? I have no idea what that means. Speaking of a detective's instincts, wasn't the victim Mr. Bruce Goodman also a detective? Yeah, did you know him? Yes, well, he was like a young cheese. A what? A pale white cheese, not yet tangy with experience on the streets. A greenhorn. Hmm. I, of course, am a hard, yellowed, sharpest tack. Oh, gross. I bet you sting, too. In any case, there in the lot, I felt something stirring in the back of my mind. Like what? Through a wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. This is what I'm interested in here. By garish car, you mean... Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. Mr. Edgeworth's? Incidentally, the knife with which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's, wasn't it? What you gonna say, buddy? Indeed it was. Oh, I get- I guess this wasn't- this information wasn't out yet? Okay. What an odd case this is. And the person you saw? You are sure it was the defendant? I saw her from no further than 30 feet away. 30 feet. I am certain it was her. If she's telling the truth, we're doomed. 
Something's weird about that. Hmm. Let's just do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we can always complain. Hmm. Witness, in your testimony, you clearly stated the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. Ergo, you are a biased witness. You might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in the future, Rookie. Huh? Rookie? Unless you're willing to risk the consequences of doubting me? Girl, what you gonna do? You gonna throw a fucking rice ball at me? I am not scared. Even when you flip your hair and become someone else. I'll fry you like a fritter. Crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. Oh, girl. You got that rest and bitch face. Oh, shit. I'm still with it, though. That... that was inspiring. What? I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You could cry plagiarism? Yeah, get her, Emma. I may be relegated to the lowly post of lunch lady, but my instincts are honed. What's this? Wait, this is a photo? A photograph? You took this? The moment I witnessed the crime, my reflexes took over and snap. I took a picture. In fact... One of my lunch boxes is rigged with a camera. For what? I suppose that's more exciting than just hanging it around her neck. I like to hang something around her neck. Uh, this is my first time seeing this photograph. That would probably have been good to show you earlier. <laughs> you think I'd show it to you, prosecutor? Think again. Uh-oh. Edgeworth, are you okay? My boyfriend works in the photography division of criminal affairs. Well, this is most certainly the defendant. Oh, shit. Um, maybe we should look at that closely. That is unmistakably Lana Sky. So what was the defendant doing at the time? Chief Prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Okay. Tell me more about this knife that the suspect was carrying. Well, I'd say the blade was about 10 centimeters long. Is that right, Mr. Edgeworth? It is your knife, after all. Uh, yes, that's about right. Prosecutors are, by nature, well-versed in the location of a man's vital organs. I'm sure it was easier than boiling an egg for my egg salad surprise set. You can't testify as her ability to kill an egg. Uh, I mean a person. Hmm? Perhaps a chicken salad set would have been a better metaphor? This lady's crazy. She's crazy. So the defendant was holding a knife. What then? Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife. I mean, I'm pr I need to hear it all. Tell the court why you didn't try to stop this crime. You did see her raise the knife to strike, no? That's a good point. The defense has a point. Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. Yeah, but you took a fucking picture of it, though. Too late? Yes. The next moment, the chief prosecutor brought down the murder weapon. I- I see. It's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. You said that before. Anything else? Scientifically speaking, uh, Ms. Sarr's testimony is flawless. Great. Thanks. What do we do? Is this it? Is my sister guilty? Let's just keep our heads cool and press with the witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, having her panicking next to me makes me calmer. Don't smile like that. Right. Okay, somehow I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. I said something, perhaps it was my finally home detective instance working. Through this is what the this is what gets me here. Through the wire fence. Next to a garish car. Chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her hand. Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Can I look at anything here? One thing I want to look at really quickly is this. Because can I check this? I need to look at this carefully. She's got blood all over her coat. Through the wire fence, you can see the fence in it. It's block A. So she was definitely where she said she was. The blood on the coat bothers me too. Wait a minute, where's the knife that was the thing? Like, she doesn't have it in the photo. Is that what we have to press on? Because I don't think we have anything else. Hmm. 
Parking lot floor plans. Let me look at something here. Yeah, that looks like it. Hmm. I think there's something up with this photo. I don't know what it is. The moment of the crime is photographed by Angel Star. It's not really the moment of the crime because she doesn't have a knife in the hand and where's the guy? Is that what I have to present on? Okay. Doing it. Oh shit, really? And you witnessed this? You saw Miss Sky stab the victim with the knife? Yeah, like at point blank range? That seems like something you would actually take the photo of and not her just standing there by the car. As I've already said, yes. I swear it on my finest salmon swirl lunch. Hmm, I'm sure that is a fine lunch. But, isn't that odd? Look at this photo- <laughs> Look at this graph! This is the photograph you took of the very moment of the crime, is it not? Then why is Miss Sky not holding the knife? That's what I thought! Yeah, bitch, why? Yeah, Edgeworth, why? G judge, why? <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? Objection. Let's be a little more careful with our evidence, shall we? It is you that needs to be more careful, Mr. Wright. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. This was taken the moment after the stabbing. Well, then she needs to fucking fix her testimony. How can you tell that? Blood splatter. Huh? See the dark crimson stain on the chief prosecutor's coat? It's a black and white photograph. Well, yeah, but you can still see it. It's hard to tell, but this could be blood. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. No problem, except you. Mr. Wright, are you just gonna sit there and take that kind of abuse? Ugh, you got a better idea? No, I'm gonna object, of course. Yeah, yeah, that's not right. She needs to at least revise her testimony. Wait, that contradicts what the witness said in her testimony. Namely, that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime, exactly. Well, it seems I was slightly unclear. My apologies. Uh-huh. What? What? That's it? If you run out of lunch, you order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering the jumbo size lunch from the get-go. Good advice. I'm not sure I understood it, but good advice. I didn't have time to stop her. Prosecutor Sky was cold, calculating, like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a premeditated murder. You can't speculate that just from looking at it. Premeditated? How do you know? Look at this chief prosecutor's hands in the photograph. Well, are those gloves? Surgical gloves made of thin rubber, most likely. Why would she have those on? Uh... If it was not premeditated, she would not be wearing those gloves. Oh. Great. Hmm. These gloves do seem to tell a tale of premeditation. Premeditated murder, a serious offense. Witness, add this to your testimony. All right. Murder was planned, the rubber gloves prove it. <sighs> Pressing this. What if she was just in the habit of wearing gloves, like driving gloves? What are you gonna say? The gloves were admitted as evidence when the defendant was arrested. They were rubber gloves of the kind used for autopsies. Well, it would have been nice if I saw them. In other words, when the chief prosecutor came to the crime scene, she came to do murder. It's the only possible conclusion one can make. Everything was planned. It was a premeditated crime. Ugh. Well, there's gotta be something here we can use. I'm sorry they took you off the force, Miss Star. What? Shut up. She's got them thinking this was all planned. If she can prove this claim, the trial's already over. I've got to think of a way to show that this wasn't premeditated. It's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. Would you stop saying that, please? God. Ugh. This is the same... This is the same shit. C please don't say that again. Somehow I always knew a day like this would come. Oh, is this... Okay. We have to press on that last piece, I think. When I sense something, perhaps it was blah, blah, blah. Through a wire fence, saw that she prosecuted, the murder was planned. This is what I have to press on, but what? What do we have? We have the knife, which might be something. Autopsy report. Death due to loss of blood, one knife wound. Died an hour and a half at 4 p.m. Victim's note. Cell phone. 
found an Edgeworth's toolbox. Wait a minute, though. If it was premeditated, why would she need to grab this from Edgeworth's car? She didn't possibly know that it was there. Wouldn't she have brought her own murder weapon? That's really the only thing I'm thinking of at the moment. Hmm. Is that really good enough, though? I think that's too easy. That would be my first thought, though. Uh, did I get it? I think I did. Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell box lunches for a living, you know. What does that have to do with anything? That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. What's with this case? The bloody murder weapon. A red car. All belonging to the prosecutor there. The defendant is the chief prosecutor for the district, right? Mommy, are prosecutors bad people? Why is there a child in here? The defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, Ricky? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Sky planned this murder, and that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing, the murder weapon? Exactly. Uh, oh. Oh, I'm great, getting a little sweaty. If you take your coat off, I don't mind. This knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon. Ah, what? Oh, she dropped her bentos. Girl, give me those. Don't drop them on the floor. Order, order. Great. Now the tide is turning in our favor. Oh, I can't believe it. Great show, Mr. Wright. My sister's as good as free. Girl, we haven't even gotten anywhere yet. Slow your roll. What you gonna wag at? You beautiful, beautiful man, you. Right? I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. What? What have you got up your sleeve? I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not over such a trifling detail. But this shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory. Bah. The prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. The defendant, Lana Sky, murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution need prove. Nothing else. I guess. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now. But you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him. It was planned. If she wasn't, why would she have been wearing... Why is she so adamant about this? Just because Lana's a prosecutor was Goodman her boyfriend. That's what I'm actually leaning towards now. I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. What? Again? Good God, how many times is this woman going to speak? Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. Well, this will take no time. How dare you? My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. Girl, calm down. Holy shit. Jesus. Alright, now what? Is this going to be all revised? Lana Skye intended to murder Detective Goodman. We, he just told you not to say that. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. What the fuck? This is totally different. This is exactly what he told you not to do. That was not what you saw. The victim was summoned to the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So, if I order a pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? Exactly. In any case, the defense may now cross-examine- Oh, I'm going to. You just hang tight. Girl, I got your number. Edgeworth, how you doing, boy? Damn, he looks hot down there. Anyway. Alright, fine. Um. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna press all of them. You weren't supposed to say that you think this. You've said that, but you haven't told us how you know. That's what I'm about to tell you, rookie. I believe what she just said was a mere prelude to the story she is about to tell. Fine. Fine, fine. Rookie. Never interrupt a storyteller. It's like pulling a bun out of the oven half-baked. I'll take my bun out of your fucking oven. Whatever. Try not to confuse a defense witness. They're very, not very quick on their feet. Oh, Edgeworth. I know, I know secretly deep down that you love me. 
Now, why did you believe the suspect had intentions to murder the victim? Her actions speak for themselves. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. You have no proof that Miss Sky called him there. We actually do. You have no proof that she didn't. Hmm, Mr. Edgeworth, thoughts? There's no record of a call made on the defendant, Miss Lana Sky's phone. She might have written him a letter. Come on, you could have tried public phone first at least. In any case, the victim came to the prosecutor's office where he was murdered. I'm sure he had a reason to be there. Witness? Why do you think it was a suspect who summoned the victim that day? I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim- Why? What kind of grudge? Like the movie? Well, I wouldn't know that. Of course you don't. That's because she didn't have a grudge. Rookie? I have a lunchbox here. Now, what's inside? How am I supposed to know? See? We agree there is a lunchbox here, but we don't know what's inside. A person's life is a lunchbox with, cre with pretzels, don't you agree? What? I get it. That's why my lunch was so salty. What the fuck? What is happening here? <laughs> the suspect had a grudge against Detective Goodman. Will you tell us your basis for thinking this? It's simple. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. Wait, 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 I don't want your damn lunch. With my must surprise- that looks dis that looks like grass. Girl, don't sell your weed to me in court. I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, mister. What do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. The autopsy report states that death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Thank you, Edgeworth. Now someone gotta listen to me. Oh, you're right. Good show, Mr. Edgeworth. I was just about to say that, though. What a hunk. He's my hero, really. Get your hands off my man. Emma, you're a child, but I will slap you. What about my objection? No one noticed? Well, witness? You got the crime scene set, right? Uh, oh, thanks. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realize that such mistakes are possible. But she's gonna screw loose this one. So you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Splattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Uh-huh. Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify. Yeah, really. What could it be? Don't say fucking ketchup, I swear to god. Her red scarf looked like blood. Are you serious? What? Hang the fuck on. Before I even press this, let me go back to that photo. Was she even wearing it? No, bitch. F oh, uh, you are a lying bitch. I'm about to get your ass. I'm not, I'm not even gonna press it. Fuck it. Why the fuck you lying? God damn it, I'm the best lawyer. Edgeworth, shut up. The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. Yeah, no shit, she got fired, didn't she? What? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. Edgeworth, why are you fucking getting in the way of my objections? Excuse me, you're making me look really bad. But you are hot, so I'll forgive you. You've proved it yourself with this photograph. Huh? But, but, but that that can't be only a true professional could be so clueless i'm sure you'll make a good lunch lady have no fear oh my fuck savage holy shit hmm harsh words but good in the end mr edgeworth prevails what was my objection chopped liver i know phoenix i feel so bad for you right now boy but it was there a scarf no no not that but something red really Stop. Just stop. Well now, where were we? 
The witness has given us an entertaining interlude. Now back to business. What? Very well, witness. Continue your testimony. Why are you listening to her when she's clearly lying about everything? You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. What? Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Uh-huh. Like what? Mm-hmm. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? The part where your sister stabs the victim. Yeah, is there going to be a way we can debunk that? This next testimony might be the moment of truth. Alright, let's listen carefully. Apprehending the suspect. Okay. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. How the fuck did you get through the fence? What are you, fucking nightcrawler or some shit? What, is there a door there? Because I didn't see a door. Is there, like, a gate? Ah, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made us to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. What, are you the fucking Borg now? Get the fuck out of here, Locutus. You are quite determined about this scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. Those are the same things. That's me, Angel Star. Uh-huh. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First off, a cobra is a kind of snake. Thank you, Phoenix. Again, we are the same person. Don't bother me with the details unless you want to get bitten. No thanks. Note to self, Attorney Wright gets bitten by snake. Don't write that down. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Oil drum? I remember seeing it. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Rear. Sounds like you have a crush. Very well, Mr. Wright. You're- Oh, fucking hell's bells. What am I gonna do with this shit? Fine. Let's figure it out. After the murder, the suspect tempted to run behind the partition off to her side. We did see that partition, but I'm gonna press this anyway. So where is this partition on the floor plans? It's right there, and it was in the photo as well. I'm sure she means this wall next to the car. That's right, and it was in the photo as well. I did see it. There was a wall there about six feet high. She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? How? How did she catch her? I want to know how you fucking, like, passed through the fucking gate. You ain't no X-Man. You say quickly, were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. But you were across from a fucking chain link fence, though. Hmm. Maybe I should press her for more details? Yes. Uh, yeah. Because I want to know, are you Nightcrawler? I really need to know because, like, literally, he's one of my favorite X-Men. And if you are him, I need an autograph or something. Uh, I'd like to see the floor plans just to be safe. The Lunchland car was... She was a visitor, thus she parked in B-Block. Right, and she saw it through the chain-link fence, like she said. So you witnessed the murder from here? That would make it about 30 feet from the car, yes. Is that correct, Miss Star? Yes, that's right. But there was a chain-link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. No, you didn't. That shit went right to the top. Didn't it? Amazing, the cough of Queen Lunch Lady Athlete, indeed. Sounds gross. It would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence. Yeah, she ain't no fucking athlete. So she couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast. No, indeed. And I thought it went all the way to the top. L well, almost. Okay. You would take a while to climb that fucking shit, even if you were really fit. How come Miss Sky didn't get away? Hmm. Hang on, something's wrong here. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. What? Why would she mention that shit? You lying. She mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? If I remember exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Cheeky. Anyway, all I heard her say was the word muffler. Just that one word? So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but someone else? Yes. The chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? You mean this cell phone? Mmm. No, ask further. I want to find out. By phone, do you mean this cell phone discovered at the crime scene? 
Yes, ultimately. Ultimately? My memory... It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see. To have sex with other bur with fish. That's what your memory's like? Alright. Fine. No, no, the court doesn't see Miss Stahl. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently, it was out of order. And so she used her own cell phone? Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm. Good witnessing, witness. What? The fuck? Judge, please. You should, of course, add this to your testimony. Hmm. The things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. What is it updated to? I need to look at it. She gave up trying to use the phone on the wall and just used her cell phone. Hmm. Hang on a minute. First of all, what is the cell phone updated to? The word muffler was overheard during a call made to Emma at 518. Oh, wait, no. We don't need to do that, I don't think. Um, what else could we look at for this? Something's weird here. Wait a minute. Hmm. If I don't talk, I'm sorry. I'm busy looking at stuff. No, no, no. There's nothing there. The phone's not in that photo. What about this? Telephone security room. Something's weird here, and I know it. This is it, isn't it? She didn't see it. She didn't see nothing because she was behind the wall. How did she get there that fast? That's what I'm thinking. Did she really see it? Mm-mm. I hope I'm not wrong. I have to conclude that you've made a personal grudge against Miss Lana Sky. What, darling? The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Are you sure? The whole fucking testimony had bias in it. Well, who would have thought you'd be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You who, together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Mm-hmm. Well, Miss Starr, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Huh. I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it all up. What? Ew! What the fuck is wrong with this woman? Ahem. <clears throat> Let's look at the floor plans. Phoenix's gonna say it. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true... You couldn't possibly have seen her making a phone call. See? Just what I said. She was behind the wall. I believe you see what I'm getting at. Nice one, Phoenix. That poem was funny. That emergency phone was on the back side of the partition. Exactly. If indeed you were in B block, you couldn't have seen it. So was she in A the whole time? Order, order! What is the meaning of this? The meaning is, is that she's a liar. She's not coughing up lunch, she's coughing up lies! Yeah! Phoenix with the fucking jokes. I like it. What's wrong, girl? What now? That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question? Tell us exactly what lie the witnesses told the court. Oh, dear. The witness lied about... What she saw, where she saw it, or the order of events. It's where she saw it, because I, I believe now, after all the things that she said, she was actually in cell block A. Cell block, like it's a jail. She was in parking lot A. I think that's what it is. She tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. It would be pointless for her to lie about it. Pointless to lie, I see. The witness did actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone. In other words, Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. Like what? A different location? Now that's a pointless lie if I ever heard one. Yes, yeah, sing, Venus, sing it out. Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? Ooh, okay. Now if I'm right, and I hope I am, 
Okay, so let's let's go over what we know. First, she said she was only standing about 30 feet away, and I believe that. And then she said that she saw her on the phone, which means she had to be somewhere not near this wall. So she couldn't have been anywhere, like, from here back here. She had to have been in the security room. I bet you anything she was up there. Because she said that you can see the whole thing from there, so that would mean that you could see this part that she saw and this, right? Am I wrong about this? I think it's there. I hope I'm right. That's what I would think. This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room? Indeed, the security room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second level, so you can see the entire lot. Yeah, I see, you can see even over the partition there. Hmm, she would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. Nope. Not in this case, Your Honor, because she had to see the crime scene as well. The witness not being part of the prosecutor's office couldn't park in A Block. The only place where she could have seen the crime and the back of the partition is here. I remember in your testimony you said, You brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? Well, Miss Starr? How many years have I been getting the better of men? To think that the tables could be turned. Today, a man has gotten the better of Angel Star. Order, order. Witness, what have you done? You used to be a detective, you should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. But this bitch is crazy. Um, Mr. Wright, doesn't this strike you as odd? Why did Miss Star lie? It doesn't make sense. Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. That is true. Why did she lie? That's the problem that I'm having. It doesn't make any sense. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was defendant who stabbed the victim. But how did she get this photo? Who took the photo? If she was in the security guard station, how did she get that? It wouldn't have been this view. That truth still stands. Objection. No, it doesn't, though. Because who then who took the photo? Now we have to think about that. It still stands. I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Uh, Phoenix? <laughs> oh no! Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Miss Starr witnessed the crime scene from the security guard station, right? But she lied and said she saw it from B-Block. It must make a vital difference, but what? What would change? The angle of the view, the distance to the crime, the distance in lighting. The distance. Yeah, it has to be this. It has to be. It changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. Objection! What? Beautiful. My condolences, Mr. Wright, but one look at the floor plans and it's quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. I don't see how that would change what she could see. Objection! It does. What she saw is not in question here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. That's right. Miss Starr, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station? Now how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Skye? Yeah, how long, darling? Well, witness? You. Yes? You ordered the squid wheels, right? The quality of my lunches has gone from low to inedible. Oh, Phoenix, you don't like squid? Me neither, darling. It's one of the things I actually don't like. I was bringing a PB&J lunch with fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Why would you make him that when you make delicious Japanese food? Hmm, boysenberry for the boyfriend. He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass-walled station. Then how did you get the photo? She went all the way down there. Before I knew what was I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. There is no way she got there that quickly. Oh, f 
fuck no. What the fuck is this shit? You expect me to believe that she took that long? That's why I had to go through the visitor's parking in B block. That's quite a detour. No way in hell did you do that. No way in hell. It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. She would have been long gone by then. You lying. This changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it. I have photographic evidence. By whom? I guess she's saying now that she took this photo after the fact? I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. You have a point, and the spork is a wonderful invention. Shut up, Judge. Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely. Uh-oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something. Raise an objection or some shit. I think I do. Let me think now. Do I have something to raise against this? Hmm. I'm just gonna do it and hope that it comes to light. There's really nothing else I can do. Five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest. Think about it. You could make pasta in that amount of time. If you like it al dente. I've got lunch boxes that pasta, tie pasta into knots, rookie. A five minute blank? Isn't that strange? Strange? If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, your honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey! Don't get the wrong idea. I didn't kill anyone. But you have the instincts of a killer. You would run. But this time was different. Miss Skye dawdled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> I don't know. Well then, it seems we've come to the end of this testimony. Have we? Thank God. She has a grudge against the defendant, and there is a blank in her testimony. Yeah, bitch, get out of here. Mr. Edgeworth, is the next witness ready to go? Are we gonna get a break? This is almost an hour. Unfortunately. Why? Who's the next one? I appear to have overestimated this witness on account of her professional history. We did it! We screwed that can shut- Oh my god, I read that completely wrong. <gasps> I- oh. Emma! I thought that said we screwed that see you next Tuesday. Oh my god. I almost read that too. <laughs> Whoops. Are we gonna get a break, please? Because this is nuts. I'm afraid the cough-up queen has been dethroned. And with that, court is adjourned. Okay, this would probably be a perfect place to stop. Wait, what? What is this? No. What is this now? Oh, bitch, I was just ready. No, I don't want your damn squid wheels. I prefer to not take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. What was that? Is this another one of her tricks? I think so. My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Starr. Ah. Uh, is this your jumbo lunchbox? Woohoo, a triple decker. Oh my god, are you serial? Out of deference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. No, I thought we were going on a break. This is going to be the longest ever. Let's hear about this decisive evidence. Like the Lunchland motto says, you won't be disappointed. What's she going to pull out of her lunchbox this time? What is this? What is this now? Decisive evidence. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now... To the matter of the victim's shoe, did I not bring this up? Where the fuck did that come from and why do you have it? Two types of blood were found on this shoe. One was of course the victim's, and the other was the defendant, Miss Lana Skye's blood. How does that make sense if she just stabbed him? This shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. Where the fuck is this coming from now? We're an hour into this and you fucking throw a shoe at me? Who throws a shoe? Honestly. What? There was blood found on that shoe? Did we have the shoe the whole time and we just didn't notice? Because I don't remember it. Try Lunchland for all your lunch and decisive evidence needs. Objection! Good God, this is dumb. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Yeah, really? Simple, as I've already said. I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And? You had blood tests performed? 
Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in forensics. In any case, Your Honor, I can't accept this as evidence. Yeah, shut her down. What? You should know the two rules of evidence law, Miss Star. Rule number one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, the shoe is a legal evidence, at least for the time being. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth sure is celebrating. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh oh, did she pull a fast one on him? Don't forget, I used to be a detective. As I mentioned previously, the shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh no! Oh great. Yeah... This is bad. Uh, oops. The prosecution's complaints notwithstanding, it appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. Well, it seems you have yet another count against you, witness. Anything to ensure that the guilty are properly judged. Fucking hell's bells. How are we getting this now? What? When is this going to end? You guys, I can't make videos much longer than an hour. This is crazy. This is too much. But it's so good. Oh, what should I press her on? I almost want to, like, make this easy. Let's see. Oh, I should have mentioned the five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. Hmm... I almost want to take a break, but we just started this goddamn testimony, so now what the fuck do I do? Good god. What do I do now? I guess I keep going. Oh well, maybe this is split into two, I have no idea. Fine. Why did you lie about those five minutes? I guess you could say I just wanted people to look at the results. The results? How many times do I have to say this? I saw the chief prosecutor stab the victim before my very own eyes. Hmm. Compared to that, a five minute blank means nothing. Then why didn't you just tell the truth? Don't make me laugh. We're dealing with the most untrustworthy of the vile lot known as prosecutors. Falsified evidence, arranged testimony, erasing and manipulating evidence. When you fight monsters, you need to use every trick in the book. Right. False testimony is the most despicable crime of all, Miss Star. Let's just get this over with. Yeah, let's hurry up on this. Alright, fine. Hmm. Did I not bring this up? Um, what else is there? Two types of blow were found on the shoe. One was, of course, the victims. And the other was... Hang on a minute now. I will press these, but I want to see something really quick. Probably we should have looked at this before I started. White enamel shoe bears traces of blood from Goodman and Lana Scott. Can we look at this? Oh, we can. Jesus. I'm doing this now. This blood. It's my sister's, right? It appears so. Lana's right hand was bandaged when I saw her in jail. That's true. I forgot about that. She must have cut herself at the time of the crime. Poor sis. There's more, though. There's more we can examine. Um. Examine. Ah! There's blood here, too! On the sole of the shoe? It's gotta be the victim's. He must have stepped in a puddle of his own blood. All this blood. It's horrible. I get you, girl. I don't like looking at blood, either. This blood might be an important clue. Is it the same if you look at this one here? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I just wanted to make sure. Uh... Stepped in a puddle of his own- Is this what we want to press on? I almost want to press this just to see what happens. It is- he's saying that it's an important clue. He's alluding to it. Okay, so... Can we just prevent the shoe? Uh-oh. Your Honor, that statement contradicts his- Oh, I think I fucked up. Maybe I have to press her and then do it? Uh-oh. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. No worries. We're okay. Let me press that- that statement and then that's what we have to do. I know it has something to do with this. Press this. It was just me being dumb. You can't say for sure the blood belonged to the victim of the blood test. You claim to know something about blood tests, rookie? Huh? Well, speak up. Uh, well... Blood comes in four types. A, B, O, and A, B. However... 
You can't tell from a blood test whether a murder was performed in cold blood. Nice one. No one's buying it. That 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 was awful. That's just a figure of speech, Mr. Wright. Actually, if you combine all the various blood tests, there are millions of types. It's practically impossible to narrow a blood sample down to one person. Or so I hear. Millions of types? If I had a little more time, I would have gotten DNA test results. But they said there's very little doubt that it could be anyone but Miss Lana Skies. That's not good enough, that's still hearsay. That ties her directly to the death of Detective Goodman. I was afraid he was going to say that. The shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. Mm -hmm. Press this, because this now seems wrong, too. I can't let this evidence go through without a fight. You ordered the peppered fish guts, right? Ew, get that away from me, girl. Some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Some like your client. She's in enough hot water to make a whole batch of soup. Mr. Wright, do you or don't you have a problem with this shoe? Girl, I got a problem with everything here. What's wrong with the victim's shoe? There is a problem. Hmm. It's gotta be with that blood because you said there was a clue. If I'm not imagining things. I'd say there is one critical problem with this evidence. A clear contradiction. That gleam in your eyes. You're still young, Ricky. I'd give you a peppered fish gut now. But you couldn't take the heat, could you? Girl, please. Alright, I think this is it. What is contradictory about the victim's shoe? Show us the problem with the evidence. Right, right, right. Okay, yes. This is what I was hoping to see. Is it this here? Oh. I think there's something wrong here. I wonder if you noticed. There's blood on the bottom of this shoe. Don't mess with me, Rookie. Or it'll be your blood on the bottom of my shoe. Hi, buddy. Sorry, there's a cat in my lap. He's very he's very concerned about how this case is going. Hi, buddy. Okay. Oh. Bye, buddy. <laughs> Sorry. Hmm. Indeed, there is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. It makes sense. The victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly be contradictory about blood on the bottom of his shoe? Oh, shit. Because I have a photo and I think there's something wrong with it. There is no blood on the floor. Hmm. Is that it? Is that actually it? Hmm. I'm presenting this because I think... Yeah, because wouldn't we see it splattered everywhere if he stepped in it? I think so. Problem lies in the footprint. The footprint? Note that the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why weren't there any bloody footprints found around the scene of the crime? Yeah, I can't believe it just came to me. As you can see, there were no traces of any such footprints at the scene of the crime. That contradicts your claim about the shoe. What? This picture only shows part of the floor, so there could be have been bloody footprints. I didn't see any when we were there, though, and surely they would have kept those. If there were any bloody prints, they would have been found. We checked the scene, exactly, and there was nothing of the sort. Exactly. Order, order! Well, witness? What, huh? I, uh, great going, Mr. Wright, but... It's true that the lack of a footprint is a contradiction, but then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint. Oh. That's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright. Think. I can't. This is going on too long. I need a fucking break. This is crazy. Hey, I don't know why it's not there. I'm just good at finding contradictions. What? What's that? Edgeworth, you got something to say? I see. Now I get it. What do you got? Our witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she slipped. There is one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. What are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A liberal. Right. Right. Didn't the oil drum have water in it? I thought that was a strange thing for a normally cool-headed chief to do. No kidding. 
Now, witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Oh, that, hmm. I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. Though apparently you're not the slowest conveyor belt in the lunchbox factory. Witness, well, was the oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. Water? What does that mean? Still don't get it, Mr. Wright? Do you want to know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason? Aha! Uh -huh. You don't mean. That didn't happen, did it? Aw, oh, for fuck's sake. It just keeps happening. To erase the bloodstains that will become the evidence against her. Oh shit. Welp. That ties things up quite nicely. The bloodstains left on the victim's shoes tie her quite clearly to this murder. Then after the deed was done, she knocked over the oil drum to erase the telltale signs. Why, that's a prosecutor's specialty, erasing evidence. We've heard. That reminds me, Miss Skye's right hand was hurt. It was. Didn't she say she cut herself when she stabbed him? So my sister's blood on the shoe, that's when it happened? Well, I see no reason to prolong this trial. Mr. Wright, do something, please. What? What can I do? Your sister has confessed to the crime and she tried to conceal it. But... Enough. There is no need for further debate. The verdict, Your Honor. Very well. But Angel Star is on the prosecution side. She could have been lying about the water. This court finds a defendant, Miss Lana Sky. Wait, did I mess up? Did I mess up? What? Oh my god! Why would they do that? My heart! I can't take this! Little girl, what did you just say? Huh? Me? Did you just say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution's side? Well, yeah, you are! You're saying my sister hid evidence by erasing the bloody footprints! Well... I thought you had your fill, but here you are, demanding a second helping. Another lunchbox. A lunchbox called Evidence. What now with this woman? Witness, don't tell me you have something else. Objection! What the fuck is happening here? You've reached your verdict, Your Honor. Any further comments will be held in contempt of court. You can't make that decision. Your threats don't scare the cough up, Queen. Look at this. Where the fuck did she get this from? A photograph? I had this just in case anyone had the gall to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Hmm. I see no room for error in this evidence. Mr. Wright, wait! Look at the asphalt in the photo! Hey, it's clearly wet. Uh-oh. Erasing the last trace of doubt from the court's mind, immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I, I couldn't help after all. No, wait, there was something weird about the photo, though. Can I look at it again? Seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. No, 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 we're not done. There's something in that photo. Let me look at it. I'm sorry, Mia. Right, wet or not, don't be so quick to throw in the towel. What was that? Is that her talking to me? Get yourself up off the asphalt. Take another good look. Don't give up. Not until the bitter end. No, no, it's definitely something with that photo. There was something weird on it. I just need to look at it one more time. This is the last piece of evidence. Very well. This time I'd like to declare a verdict for good. Wait, say something. Phoenix, object! Objection! Yes, thank you. Your Honor, wait. What is it with you people? Can't I hand down my verdicts in peace anymore? Whatever it is, can it wait? No, it can't. Then it will be too late. Look at this graph! The last one submitted. There it is, there it is. The thing. What's that thing in the fucking exhaust pipe? This trial isn't over until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. So, right. Are you saying there's a problem with the slightest piece of evidence? Yes, I am. Uh, what is that thing in the fucking exhaust? Yeah, there's a problem. Right or wrong, I've got to go ahead with this. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show the court the problem in this photograph. What is that thing? 
It's bugging me now because it looks weird. What is it? Is it like a fabric or is it liquid? I can't even tell. It's, oh god, this is probably nothing and I'm gonna get in big trouble. What the fuck is that? I gotta know. Is that it? Weird. The problem in this photograph is here. What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Wait just a moment, Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor, you just said muffler. However, I see no trace of a muffler or scarf in any kind of this photograph. The muffler of the car, you dingus. A muffler is also part of on a motorcycle or car, Your Honor. Just think of it as part of the exhaust system, a pipe. I see, and uh, I see. How, how did he not know that? What's that suspicious looking claw sticking out of the car's muffler? Huh, so what if there is something sticking out of the muffler? What does that have to do with this case? Absolutely nothing. Objection! I don't think so. That's too weird to be a coincidence. Sorry, Miss Star, but it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. What? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has on his mind. Tell us why you think this piece of cloth in the muffler is related to this case. Okay, let's think. I mean, the only thing we have tying the muffler thing is the cell phone, because it actually says now the word muffler was overheard during call mate. Is this it? Let's try it. Miss Star, recall your testimony for the court. Ah, uh, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. Uh-huh. Right. This has to be it. Muffler! Ugh! Ugh! Could it be that muffler you heard mentioned? Was actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means this piece of cloth is vital evidence. Oh! Whoa. I'm not gonna try to make whatever sound that is. Can we have a break, please? Holy shit, this is long. Well, it seems we will have to suspend the proceeding. Thank God for that! S suspend I find myself wondering about that piece of cloth. If we leave any question unanswered here, we do disservice to the law. Have the car at the crime scene inspected at once and bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after we've seen all the evidence. Agreed? Thank goodness. I suppose so. Man, thank God. Are we gonna get a chance to go do something? The court will adjourn for a 30 minute recess. Oh, thank you, Jesus. These long ones. My gosh, I'm sorry if there may be an ad in the middle of these long ones. It's just that it's really hard to do these long ones, and uh, it helps me a lot to have an ad in the middle, but we'll see. Maybe there might not be one. It depends. It's all up to YouTube, really, when they get this long. So some people have said stuff. Some people have not. So we'll see. It's lunchtime. Didn't you just eat? What the hell? Or do we get it to be continued? Thank God. In the next one, I'll poop my pants a little more, but this is getting crazy good. I hope you guys are enjoying it, because I am a lot. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.